Hi, my name is Aniv Seris and I'm running the application delivery management and the digital factory in the Microfocus CDO office. In this webinar, I would like to share with you some insights on value stream metrics and specifically how to set and use the right metrics for you. First, we need to distinguish between two main types of VSM metrics. Business value metrics, which measure the value stream outcomes, the desired business benefit, the value as realized by customers. In other words, how effective you are. This may include metrics to measure commercial value, such as how much revenue will this generate or EBITDA, customer value, such as customer satisfaction as measured by NPS or number of referral, market value, how will this differentiate or address gap products and retain customers as measured by market share. There are many and it is commonly different between organizations and over time. In addition, there are flow metrics, which measure the value stream outputs. In other words, how efficient your value delivery is. This includes speed, as measured by cycle time or lead time, quality, such as open defect rate, test coverage, escape defects, velocity, such as work in progress. There are a variety of frameworks, including the DevOps research and assessment, the flow framework, the scale agile framework, and others that propose flow-related metrics you can leverage. Eventually, value stream teams should manage both business value and flow metrics to optimize business outcomes, being effective and efficient. Keep in mind, metric is a great vehicle to drive a change in behavior. However, Using metrics in the wrong manner may drive to undesirable behavior and outcomes. Some common pitfalls include putting a number without the context may cause people to de-emphasize and forget the actual objectives and goals behind the numbers. Overloading a metric with multiple purposes, such as measuring people performance, may drive people to find creative ways to manipulate the system. And keeping metrics that were already achieved due to past decisions can defocus, add overhead, and drive stagnation. So, how can you set and use metrics the right way? Let me suggest an approach and few best practices. Start by setting the desired outcomes. It should be quantifiable and measurable. For example, improving customer satisfaction as measured by number of referrals, improve product quality as measured by test coverage and customer encounter defects. This will validate the motivation and context is aligned with the stakeholders. The common way to define goals is using OKRs. We will touch more on OKRs next. The people with most knowledge should come up with the metrics that fits most to monitor progress toward the goal. This should be done in a joint effort, including all stakeholders, spanning the business and technology teams. Then, continuously measure the metrics and progress towards the goals. Adapt based on customer and stakeholder feedback. Change metric if there is a misfit, and retire metrics for achieved goals. Keep in mind, the metrics follow the goals and not vice versa. Now let's find out what OKR is and how it can assist in implementing this approach. Objectives and Key Results, also known as OKR, is a goal-setting framework for defining and tracking objectives and their outcomes. Its goal is to define how to achieve objectives through concrete, specific, and measurable actions. Key results can be measured by a variety of metrics on any scale. OKRs follow a simple and flexible template. I will achieve an objective as measured by a set of key results. The objective is the goal you want to achieve, and the key results are the metrics which measure the progress towards the objectives. Now let's see a few examples to realize how it comes together. This is a customer-centric example. The main goal is improving customer satisfaction. The hypothesis is that it can be achieved for quality improvements. The metrics 
came up collaboratively by the business and the technical stakeholders, including R&D, QA, product manager, etc. The metrics, including the customer encountered defects, number of high critical released defects, and functional test coverage should be measured continuously to track progress towards the main goal and adapt based on feedback. Let's review another example. This is a team-centric example. The main goal is accelerating cycle time, and the hypothesis is that it can be achieved by moving from manual activities to automated activities. The metrics came up collaboratively by the stakeholders, and here are as well, should be measured continuously to track progress towards the main goals and adapt based on feedback. To summarize, VSM has two types of metrics, business metrics that measures outcomes and effectiveness, and flow metrics that measure outputs and efficiency. Both should be managed to optimize business outcomes, being effective and efficient. There are pitfalls in how to select and use metrics. Using the wrong manner, it may drive to undesirable behavior and outcomes. We went over some best practices that enables using metrics the right way by focusing first on the goals, selecting the metrics through a joint effort, and continuously measure and adapt based on feedback. And we reviewed how OKR framework can help in executing the approach. Hope you find this webinar useful and thank you for your time.